Although, oh, okay, prove me wrong then. <laughs> hey guys, this is Tigazza in Revolt Studio. I thought I'd do a quick if you like a tutorial on how to do these kind of uh, engines at the moment I've got my uh, hover thing actually going around this uh, this sphere it's actually attached to the sphere if you like let's actually change this there you go you can see it let's actually restart it so you can actually see it going around the sphere this is far from uh, complete, but as you can see, <laughs> kind of uh, almost game breaking kind of thing. So yeah, this is uh, a simplified version of my uh, the same system that I'm using for my hover car. I've just taken out all the fancy stuff and just put it back to basics kind of thing. Right, let's get to the code of this thing. So basically all I'm doing is I'm casting a ray from the engine itself which is basically that or it could be even that one if I want to. I've got two here and it, I'm casting a ray directly down from the orientation of that brick, that green line there and it's recording what it's hitting if there's anything there by what it's returning with that function there so basically what I've done is I've got that boolean value there to uh, let you choose if you want to cast a ray to the brick orientation like if the brick's upside down it, the ray will point upwards if you set that to false if the brick's upside down it always point downwards I don't know why you would want that but at the same time I've got it in there just in case like if you only wanted it to hover no matter what orientation your engine is it's there so basically what I do is say if that's on then we take the engine C frame position that's the most important bit and then pass that in the first part of the way new then we get the unit between the engine C frame and a offset from that from that uh, position of the engine in this case it's 10 down from the engine rotation or brick rotation like if the bricks rotated upside down that would be 10 studs up so or if the bricks the same way as it is here like this it'd be 10 studs down so that's basically just setting an offset it could be positive negative number that that number there then I'm minusing the C frame position the position from the C frame if you like and then calling the unit which is basically if I can remember correctly that's the oh what do you call that it's sort of it sort of uh, sets the length of the vector to 1 I think that's what that is I can't remember what that's called and then I'm timesing it by the max height which is set up here and I think I added 20 on this so it don't go past when it goes past the max height it will still hit something and if it's above max height it will just turn off kind of thing so you don't get any errors I think that's just uh, some error checking that I was doing there. I'm not 100% sure if you need that. So then all I'm doing then is returning that function there which returns the part that it is that is that the ray is hitting uh, the part position of where it's hitting the ray I think it's on the ray it might be the actual position of the part 
the hit side of the part that brick that is uh, hit let's just say we've got the ray pointing down let's actually create another brick get it up here all right let's just say that's the engine itself and we've got a ray pointing down that uh what was it third bit where is it the hit side basically just uh, hit tells you what side it's hit in a vector 3 uh, way of doing it basically like that but instead of uh, those numbers there it'd be something like let's see if I can get it right vector 3 new That will be the left side. That will be the right side. I think that will be a diagonal top side. And so on and so forth. That's basically what it returns like. Then we get the material. The material of the part also useful for uh, terrain objects. Like uh, these things. Basically, everybody's got got a terrain in their place now. That's basically what that's that's returning. Just the material that it's uh, on the cell of the terrain. And then in the guts of the machine, if you like, I'm calling that function and just using the two parts of it, which is the first two, which is the part and the position of the whatever the ray has hit. Then from that. Uh, little commented out uh, expression I guess you, that's what you can call it I do the range which is the position from that function there minus the engine position which is uh, that and then calling magnitude which is the length of the uh, of that new vector and then the delta range is basically that vector minus the old range which is basically just the delta of the range which is the last time it went through the list kind of thing let's just say I say that's a range of 0 0.1.0. Let's actually type that. I say it's that, the range is that. And then once it goes through, so it's basically that, and then the delta of, of that is oh, would help if I can type which is basically that uh, old range that should be not delta range I can't type tonight <laughs> that's basically what it is it's just the difference between the two old range and range if you like and if you wonder what I'm meaning by the range it's basically the uh, the ray basically that if you like so it's just basically just the distance between the two parts like the ground and the engine this value here is where we actually cap how high it can actually go operate at where if the uh let's have a look hover no that's actually capping the value that how high you can actually go now i think i've uh, missed a few bits here but whatever <laughs> i think i've just noticed a little bug here where I'm sort of capping the actual hover height but when it comes to the actual ray itself no wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute 
that is capped there that's fine it's just 20 plus the hover height so that's fine uh, max height sorry. then all I'm doing then is taking the hover height value which is that value there minus the range which is the distance between the engine and the ground and the delta of that which is as I explained earlier or just now I should say times it by I'm not 100 percent sure but that might be dampening which is a dampening of five and if the part is nil then we just zero out and finally after that we set a the body thrust which is inside the part to the vector vector 3 value the x is 0 and z is 0 then we take the power times by the mass of the engine itself we can change that to a value if you wanted to I've just done the mass of the uh, of the engine and then just times it by 196.2 which is basically weightless if you like for that brick or engine you can change that to I don't know like 2000 if you wanted to just a large number and we'll see one engine will probably work better than the other one change that to about 10,000 and see what happens I expect we get a lot of uh, oscillating yeah this code is not uh, perfect at the moment yeah there we go <laughs> it's cool I think it said uh, I had enough of this and I'm out of it yeah there we go oh, off it goes <laughs> So it's basically just the power of the uh, how much to change it by so let's uh, change it back and then we all, all we're doing then after that is setting the old range to range the reason why I've used coroutine yield is because this does not work with weight I can uh, show you quickly it's actually uh, update the other one I hope that was the right one yeah the script's still there so that's fine yeah because uh, with weight we get a lot of uh, oscillating although oh okay prove me wrong then <laughs> let's put that on the ground and see if we get any oscillation because it does oscillate sometimes unless it's just trolling me whatever <laughs> right let's put this up here play oh okay prove me wrong so I guess you can use it use the weight <laughs> whatever you can use co-routine co yield if you want to it's just uh, how much it updates by that's all that is let's actually get into the game and see if I can push it around Yeah, there we go. Off it goes. Oh, it's disappeared. It's probably underneath the base plate. Oh, no, it's just got deleted. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought I'd do a little quick tutorial on how to... Uh, come here. How to do that uh, hover system. There are still a load of bugs in it, like... Uh, sometimes when you set the hover height too high or too low or set it too quickly while it's running it does also tend to oscillate quite a bit I'll see if I can actually make that do that and show you you watch since I'm doing this now it probably won't do it oh it's fine that's fine <laughs> so oh well whatever oh there it goes where's it going then let's have a look 
Oh, it's flying off. Yeah, so it's really uh, still in the in its infancy. Anyway, this has been Tikazza in Robot Studio, and if you like, I can actually post this this code on online somewhere, so you can actually copy and paste it. And I'll get you guys later. Tikazza signing out.